After we had a couple of attacks, the, the guys were worried about the females at the, you know, at the housing state. So we had bodyguards um, for that location. So we didn't travel around. If we had to get in a truck and go to the office, we would have bodyguards. There was guards at the gate, checking the gate. Nobody could come in or go out without the, um, the guys checking who it is. Uh, and if we got in the vehicle, you would have one or two jump in the back of you. But it, it was okay, you got used to it. They knew exactly the routine. Uh, if I decided to get in the truck, all, all the guys were in the back. So it was a routine thing. I had to have uh, six bodyguards just because I was put in a situation um, that I was pregnant with Bruce, but this is in uh, in the farm that Dave was working, nothing to do with Tilcord, but that was three years later, where I had to have six bodyguards, three on and three off. The government took our guys for six weeks and I had to run the farm and I was pregnant and I had a Uzi and there was no ways I could use a weapon. So they used ex-terrorists to be our bodyguards. That's what I had. Anyway, I got these guys training up and down because <laughs> they weren't going to sit all day. So I got them up and down and wherever I went, I had three with me and at night, three were on at night. Um, but that's how I lived on the, the proper, you know, the farms, not the tribal trust farms. Uh, but there was no security there. The only security we had was um, a fence and a radio. And that wasn't enough if you were under attack, where they were burning the farm in different places to, to get you out of it, so they could come in and attack you behind. You have to think like a terrorist. Um, so you had to be very careful how you did. If I felt I was unsafe, I just phone on our radio where you just get on with the radio, tell them what number you are, and the police would come out or the army, it depends how bad it is, and then they would come out. But when Dave was there, we didn't have them. It's only when I was on my own, because I just couldn't do it on my own. If I was attacked, I couldn't cope with the baby in your stomach. <laughs> So I couldn't do that. Uh, the one day that Dave and I were together, the terrorists let rip in the compound below us, but not knowing, it sounded as though it was right on top of us. And that's when I, I flew down, because you've been trained, the first thing you do is go flat. And I forgot I had a baby. <laughs> so then I started having uh, contractions, and I had the whole police force and the army waiting <laughs> to see if Bruce, if the contraction stopped. And eventually they stopped. Uh, but in the meantime, it was very frightening. Uh, I think we were on the phone at the time and you just didn't know what to do. And all you could do is just lay flat in case they threw grenades or mortar in. So the best thing, the only way to do it because everything explodes up. So if you're flat, you won't get hit. That's what I was trained to do. So that's what I did, but I forgot where Bruce was there. <laughs> so only about two hours later, everything settled down and we were okay. And to find out the police let rip in the compound. <laughs> but in the meantime, we didn't know that. We thought we were under attack. So there's lots of things that went on that you, you don't know unless you're in contact with them all the time, or you can say, I've heard shots and then they will tell you what it is. But that particular day, we didn't know what it was because it sounded as though it was coming through the house. We weren't allowed cameras there. The cameras were brought through when mum came, so she, mum managed to get some photos, but you weren't allowed to take photos in that area by the police or anything. So the only photos we actually got is what mum took of that area. Uh, Mashumbi Pools, they had a reporter come in sneaking in. They got hold of a camera and they destroyed it because there's armored trucks that did not want them the other side to see what we had. Uh, the one was called the Puki, and it was a landmine vehicle to run in front of the, the, the convoy because so many of the guys got killed or died or injured with landmines. So this thing could drive over them and pick them up. So the trucks and the convoys could carry on through or come all the way back. But what these guys did, as soon as they hit landmine hit, they were coming from the side 
and then kill anything they can. So they had to do something, so we weren't allowed any cameras. So the photos that we got were, we were very lucky. That's the only record we actually got. But they didn't nail mommy. I don't think they knew. <laughs> the army, the, the police guy knew we had it and we didn't really disclose any of those pictures until years later because of the, it's normally the um, number plates because that will be showing. So a lot of the photos weren't shown until maybe 20 years, 30 years later. So now it doesn't really mean anything, but at the time you couldn't do it. Because the people, remember, we, we didn't have digital. Uh, they have to develop them, and then they can go straight through to whoever. So they had to be careful. Um, we did have a reporter that came through and did a story. Um, but she was allowed to take photos of our Avery. We had the, the little Zambezi lovebirds. And they did a write-up of me on uh, when we were at Mashombi about the, the little lovebirds. We built an Avery in the um, baobab tree. And um, we used to look after them, Beverly and myself. We used to look after them. But when we left, we let them all go. It was just something to do, because us women didn't have very much to do. So we had to make our, our uh, entertainment. Um, you know, different things that we had to do. And I used to try bake cakes, because by then I didn't know how to bake a cake, but I learned. And then all the army guys had some cake. <laughs> it was quite funny, and biscuits, you know, things that we'd like. Um, so they all enjoyed it as well. Uh, when we went to Mazarabani, um, it wasn't as nice as Mashumbi. I still, to this day, love Mashumbi. It was right in the deep of the bush. Your, your grass was about nine, ten foot high. When we drove through trucks, um, it, you, you, had, you couldn't see where you were going. So one of us would have to go on the top and direct the driver where we're going. Uh, to do five miles, it took us seven hours because of the terrain, the grass, the river. We had to try and make a place for us to go through the river. Um, it was more venture because we wanted to go out and, and explore. So that's what we did on a Sunday. And um, it was very tiring at the end when you couldn't get back because you're, you're trying to get through all this grass and the river. But when we found the waterfall, it was so rewarding. Uh, and then we had our little picnic and barbecue. And then we came all the way back. 